Thank you very much. Uh, you know, and I am a physician. I was a physiology researcher. I actually did fetal research, but it was at fetal sheep, it was cerebral blood flow. Uh, and I also was a human principal uh, investigator who actually had to file IRB applications. I don't intend to, uh, you know, litigate the use of fetal tissue, because I suspect we all agree about this. And I'm just going to, uh, Dr. Donovan, Ms. Cunningham, uh, when you said the question about fetal tissue, I, I assume you support fetal tissue research from spontaneously aborted fetuses, correct? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. So we all agree. Let's all agree this is not litigating fetal tissue research. We all agree it's, uh, it should be done. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Donovan, let me just say, I, I was fascinated by your, because what we're talking about here is consent and whether IRB consent and patient consent, whether that's all adequate. And the idea that when you're a guardian of someone, that you are qualified to give consent because you have the global best interest of that person in mind, has to be brought into question when, you're, when it's an elective abortion. I mean, it just has to be. And uh, with regards to the millions of people saved by, you know, by, by fetal tissue research, we're all talking about the vaccines, the two cell lines. One cell line, interesting, a female child aborted because the family was too big. I would proffer that that mother, that if you gave that child the, and that child could somehow give consent, they'd never consent to that abortion. The second one is a male which was aborted for, quote, psychiatric reasons. Now, when I had to get IRB approval on a patient, I had to be careful about approaching a patient with psychiatric illness because a lot of people feel they don't have the ability uh, to give consent. So it was a, it was a very good point you made. Um, let me just talk a little bit about an IRB question, specifically for you, Dr. Donovan. Is the source of fetal tissue or how it is acquired a valid question that an IRB should have answered before they approve a project? It's not only a valid question, it is asked and has to be answered. Some institutions would absolutely forbid its so, use. So that if there were an instance where the application was, let's say, massaged a little bit, so that it was a little unclear what the source was, in an attempt to bypass that, that would, that would really uh, bypass the intention of an IRB. Is that right? If you, for instance, you didn't call it exactly what it was or what, you know, what, what could be readily identified as the source. Yes, you, you clearly know what you're talking about. Yeah. And in fact, uh, would that occur, the uh, investigator would be in trouble with the IRB. They would be called in and questioned about it. Sure. Let's uh, put up, uh, uh, look at Exhibit A3, which is a commonly used form for fetal tissue donation that was uncovered through discovery uh, by the committee. Um, Ms. Cunningham, when I had to get uh, consent from, from patients, because we did uh, we obtained human tissue at a cesarean section, human uterine tissue. We normally exactly described the tissue and then really kind of exactly described what it was going for. It could be global. It could be, okay, it's to study, in this case it was to study, you know, uh, uterine myocytes and, and their effect on preterm labor. Do you find anywhere on that form where it, where it uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't see anywhere where it asks specifically what tissue it is. In, in the case brought up by Dr. Bouchon, I assume that at that abortion, they didn't go to the mother before and say, oh, by the way, you know, uh, we're going to collect the, uh, you know, a, a, an arm and a leg and we're going to do it for this kind of research. Is that, is that something you think part of informed consent ought to be, that you actually know the where this tissue is going and for what? Yes, and I'm not the only one. If you look at elements of fetal tissue donation consent in other contexts, it's quite specific on what is being um, discussed with the uh, prospective donor or their family. Absolutely. Ms. Charo. I'm to the not point that the gentlelady, no, I, I'm not, I have to ask the question. Oh, I'm sorry. To the point from the gentlelady from Tennessee. When my wife passed away a year and a half ago, I got a call from the medical examiner's office requesting donation of her brain. It was a tough call. But it was spe they specified one tissue, and they specified what was going to be done with it. Now you look at Exhibit A3, and then you look at Exhibit C1 and C2, which are actually what, what various anatomical donation forms are used by states. It's strikingly different. Strikingly different. Do you think that it really ought to be included when you ask someone, a woman, to donate the fetal tissue that you perhaps suggest specifically what it's going for and what the specific tissues to be used are going to be? 
if, you, if the person knows or should they make a best effort to know? I am not sure. I think Thank it you very much. I yield back. 